In this video, I'll be giving an overview of Akka, the popular toolkit used for building highly concurrent message-driven applications on the JVM using the actor pattern. But first, a question. Have you tried building a highly concurrent performant application with the likes of Java or Scala? If so, you'll have probably been thrust into the world of managing thread pulls, object locks, semaphores, bottlenecks, deadlocks, etc. Managing all of this becomes very complex very quickly, but mostly it steals focus and attention from what's really important, solving business problems. Acker is an implementation of the actor pattern, an abstraction that allows us to reason with highly concurrent and parallelized systems using a mental model that's easier to work with, actors and messages. Actors are used to encapsulate bits of business logic and behavior. This could be an e-commerce shopping basket, an online chat room session, a flight reservation, or a gambling bet slip, for example. You don't interact directly with or manipulate actors or their internal state. You communicate between them using messages. You can think of messages as operations or state updates you wish to send to other actors, for them themselves to act upon. Going back to our earlier examples, this could be one chat room user sending another a message, or requesting an additional seat on a plane for a flight reservation. ACA handles the facilitation of interactions between all actors by assigning them each a mailbox. When you send a message to an actor, you're actually sending that message to its mailbox, which is an ordered queue that the actor consumes from. This ensures that only one thing at a time is interacting with an actor, and therefore that there's no race conditions between various external actors trying to change the behavior or state of an actor. There's two types of message patterns you can use, tell and ask. Telling an actor something involves sending a message to them in a fire and forget approach. Asking an actor something on the other hand involves sending a message and then waiting for the target actor to respond. In ACA, there is the concept of the supervision hierarchy. Actors create actors and every child actor that is created has a reference to its parent. This is a useful way to delegate operations and break down complex models. Maintaining a reference to its parent means that messages can easily be sent between the child and the parent actors and that the parent can manage the life cycle of its children, for example if it needs to tear them down. Although actors can outlive their children, the inverse isn't possible, otherwise that would result in orphaned actors which breaks the supervisor hierarchy. When an actor is no longer needed, you can implement a message type understood by the actor to ask itself to shut down. This would typically be a message or event that has meaning in the domain, such as cancelling a reservation. When this happens, that actor can call context.stop to gracefully stop itself. In extenuating circumstances, you can also send poison pill and kill messages where a poison pill will get processed after the actor's existing messages in its mailbox, and a kill message will immediately be actioned and result in an actor killed exception. If an actor is unexpectedly terminated, its supervising actor can intervene and decide on how to handle the situation. This may be either restarting the affected actor, with the option to delay this, resume the actor with its current state, stop the actor permanently or bubble the failure upwards, deferring to its supervisor to subsequently handle the problem. The error kernel pattern is used commonly with ACA as well. When you have exceptions, unhandled or otherwise, in typical Java or Scala applications, handling these can become very complicated very quickly, even more so when you have to manage error handling across thread boundaries. The error kernel pattern encourages you to delegate dangerous operations, such as remote calls to external APIs, to actors that isolate their parent actor from exceptions or failures that may occur. In the event of an exception occurring, the blast radius of the failure is restricted to the immediate actor, and the parent can handle the failure in a controlled manner. There are a number of hooks that can be used to implement custom behavior during the life cycle of an actor as well, such as pre-start, pre-restart, and post-stop. Actors can also watch other actors not necessarily within their own supervision hierarchy, 
to be notified when actors are terminated for whatever reason. This can be useful when you need to react to an actor being terminated, such as removing cash metadata about that actor or kicking off other processes to handle that actor's termination. All these actors together form what's called the actor system, which is a container that houses the actors and provides the supporting framework and processes needed to manage them. An actor system will typically spin up a number of threads to handle its workload, and it's possible, but uncommon, to operate more than one actor system per JVM application. The top level actor is known as the guardian actor. This is ultimately the longest lasting actor in any system. It's responsible for supervising all the other actors that are created, and if the Guardian actor is terminated, then it shuts down the rest of the actor system with it. The Guardian actor in simple systems can be used to handle all of the application logic, but as soon as it manages more than one responsibility, then it should delegate these to other actors and simply serve as a bootstrapping process. Now, as performant as Acker can be, it can eventually hit a ceiling, as any application does when trying to scale it up. But Akka allows you to distribute the work across multiple nodes, each consisting of its own actor system, but being cluster aware and knowing how to route messages to actors across them. If either your actor, actor system, or JVM crashes unexpectedly, or your actor is migrated to another node, for example, when scaling a cluster of actor systems, then you can use Acker Persistence to recover them. Acker Persistence supports a number of data stores, including RDBMS systems such as MySQL and Postgres, and also Apache Cassandra. Persistent actors use event sourcing to rebuild the state of an actor by storing the events, or messages, that are sent to an actor. This immutable append-only approach allows for high throughput and guarantee that the actor's recovered state will be exactly what it was before the failure. I'd recommend reading up more about event sourcing if you wish to know more about the benefits of this approach and how it can be used in applications wider than ACA in the actor pattern. So that concludes this high level overview of ACA in the actor pattern. I hope you found this video useful. And it's given you a good understanding of the core concepts. Questions and feedback are always welcome, but for now, thanks for watching.